Um, so we're on. We're on now. Uh, first of all, for those of you guys who uh, came out here um, live for the meeting, thank you very much. Um, for those who are watching, it's, uh, it's a smallish group here, but uh, the hardcore, um, the serious ones. Um, today, we're just going to talk a little bit about what's coming up for the Falcons for the uh, 2017 fall campaign. Um, there's going to be some changes in the in the league schedule um, that are likely to come, which is a little bit more of an opportunity to do um, to put a little bit more focus on the Falcons. Uh, so we're going to talk a little bit about that. Uh, we're going to talk about what events we have coming up, um, and uh, we'll talk a little bit about. Uh, Funding and finances. So uh, we'll, we'll sort of go in in that order. So first of all, in all likelihood, um, you know, this is sort of a preliminary announcement, but uh, subject to really fine-tuning some of the details. But in all likelihood, in the fall, um, there will be two programs: sort of a new uh, new player camp um, and Falcons running in parallel, uh, meaning that the league season probably will not begin until after the new year, um, after the new year. So um, uh, we're really trying to um, eliminate a lot of the overlap that we get, particularly late in the fall um, as we're preparing for a little and things like that when team, the players are with their teams and that sort of thing. Um, there are a lot of other reasons for it. Um, you know, one of the main reasons is really um, we feel that with a lot of the Incoming players and players who are new to the sport, um, they need a better opportunity to sort of work um, <laughs> on the fundamentals, um, start hitting um, before they join their team, uh, so that when we organize the teams, they can really get the ground running. Um, the other, another reason for it is that um, what we found is the men don't like to play consecutive weeks. Um, well, that's not correct. Men don't like to play an elongated season, so what we've done in the past um, is we've sort of staggered weeks. Um, but we think that it's much more exciting to sort of compress the season and have it, you know, things happen quickly and it leads very quickly to the championship game and that sort of thing. Um, but back to the main point, really a big factor is that we really want to focus a lot on the Falcons um, um, to develop the program. Uh, to prepare the kids a little bit uh, better for these competitions. And things are going to move very, very, very quickly. So, um, with that said, um, I think it's, it's worth noting that uh, I'm uh, wearing this thing here that uh, was presented to me by um, Coach Jerry over here and, uh, and our social media coordinator over here. <laughs> um, Representing a successful campaign for the U14 Falcons uh, last year in Orlando. So we want to build on that um, at all levels. And one of the things that we're going to do is we're going to really integrate more of the um, programs, not just among all the youth levels, but also uh, including the men. So on that note, I've just returned from uh, Kiev last week, went up there with the, uh, with the men we played again, a game against the, um, the Kiev Patriots. Um, that was a really fascinating experience. It was a very good example of the impact of international um, uh, friendly competition. The, um, for Ukraine, it was their first sort of international football game. And um, we were playing in a big stadium. It was the former Dinamo Kiev Stadium. They brought out like military marching band. They brought out, you know, they had cheerleaders they had, I mean, whole nine hours, a few thousand people in the stands, um, a lot of pageantry, they filmed it, um, and it was really uh, a, a great event. <coughs> what handicapped our team is the same thing that handicaps Falcons teams all the time, really is just that, you know, we showed up there with uh, 22 guys to play 78, five guys, um, um, incredible showing, we lost 18 to 14, but, um, you know, with the full squad, um, and a little bit more practice um, would be a different result. That is true very much of the uh, of the youth Falcons as well. And um, one of the things that we really need to focus on is making sure that um, we get a level of commitment to the program um, 
builds us to build competitive teams. And why is that? Is that because we as coaches want to go over the world and, you know, give a chance and say we want to know? It's really that there are a lot of players who commit themselves um, to playing, <laughs> to participating in Falcons, who will show up and work hard and practice. Um, and those players are shortchanged by what I call the, you know, the, the part-timers, the guys who kind of show up or don't show up. They're in, they're out, they're not really sure, and that sort of thing. Falcons is an elite program, um, and uh, it's intended to really, you know, pull together the best that we have to offer as a league and go on the road and showcase what we've built out here over the last five years, which you guys have done. So, um, you know, we owe it to ourselves to really, um, you know, treat it like that um, as, as players and, and really as, as families as well. Um, so, what's coming up? Well, there's a few things coming up. We'll start with um, one kind of cool little thing that I mentioned previously uh, in another form. Um, we're probably going to move away from the traditional UAE colors for the Falcons um, and go to something a little bit more creative, a little bit more funky. Uh, this has to do with some things that are happening uh, within the UAE. Uh, we've recently sort of fallen under the Rugby Federation, there's a new committee for American football, and so the government's sort of taking more, I guess, we pop on the radar screen and we go, hey, what are you guys doing over there? And uh, Which is a good thing, um, but it, it comes with some challenges, and one of the things we, we really need to do is separate. We're not a national team. The EFL is not the UAE. Uh, we're a private organization. Um, and, uh, you know, when we first put the Falcons together, we, you know, looked at the uh, national colors and that makes sense, but probably less so now. Uh, so what does that mean? That means we get to have a lot of fun like uh, my Oregon Ducks and get really creative and funky with the uniforms. It's always going to be fun for the kids. So I'm going to repeat something that um, I said earlier, and it's going to come back again later on when we talk about funding. But uh, one of the things that we really would love to do is to, um, is to get Falcons helmets um, for all levels. Um, so we need sponsors. So anyone out there who... Uh, who's got a contact or somebody who um, you know, wants to participate in sponsoring the Falcons, this is a good opportunity here. So we'll come back to finances in a minute. So what are we going to do? Um, we've got a pretty packed schedule. Uh, we're going to start off, and I'll sort of share with you a couple of things that we have here. Um, so starting in September, uh, we have been, we've been invited uh, by team in Spain uh, to go to travel to Madrid. Uh, this will be a competition at three different levels, U19, uh, U15, and U13 level. Um, now it's going to be a really interesting competition because there are two teams from Spain. One we're basically a Madrid all-star team. Um, the other one is the all-stars from Catalonia. Um, and then there's a team traveling in from Panama. So it's going to be a really interesting competition. Um, a cool little tournament. Um, according to this letter, it's the first of its kind in Spain, and that's something that Falcons are known for, always going out and doing things sort of that nobody else has done yet, and then everybody follows. Um, so this one, um, U13 competition will only be versus Panama. Spain, Spanish teams don't play contact, full contact football. They only play flag at the lower levels. So it'll be full contact, U19. U15, U13 for us. Um, the um, Spanish teams will play full contact at the U19, U15 level, and the Panama teams will play at all three levels as well. So uh, this should be a really interesting competition. The time frame right now, uh, according to the letter, they're saying um, somewhere around the 18th to the 22nd. We have to hammer out the uh, you know the actual game dates and then we can figure out what the schedule will be for us in terms of our travel dates and whatnot. Um, but you can pretty much circle that last week of September in your calendars. Um, realize that, you know, for a lot of a lot, lot of families are just coming back to school and say, oh, well, that's really close. But um, we don't drive the train on these dates. Actually, this tournament was organized between Panama and Spain, and uh, it was our relationship with the Panamanian team. Uh, we've been talking to them about getting together and playing for a while. And they said, well, why don't we meet in Spain? It's a great idea. So um, in Spain, so that works out pretty well. So um, 
So that that is September. So what's going to happen in October? Well, we're trying to host a home tournament right now. Um, we don't have our competition lined up. Um, we're working on it. My guess is that that'll likely be U19 level, possibly U15 level. Um, not U13. It's difficult for us to host um, U13 tournaments. Um, end of October, uh, we've been invited back by Singapore. Um, this is now becoming sort of a rivalry. Uh, we played them in Singapore two years ago, here last year, and we're going back. Um, that'll be U19 and U15 level. Um, and uh, we, uh, we definitely, um, we definitely want to want to get a W at the uh, U19 level this year. Um, so uh, this will be an interesting one. Really like these guys over there. They've got a good program. We've developed a nice uh, cordial relationship with them. And um, we were initially not sure if we were going to do this, but they called us and they said, listen, we really want to keep this partnership going. And we said, yeah, that's a good one. Let's, let's continue to develop the history. So we're going to go out there. We're going to play them. Uh, that's a, basically a weekend trip. Uh, probably like a three or four day trip. Um, it's a quick hop over there, one game at each level, turn around and come back. Um, now, I'll pause there. In between all of that, for those of you who are interested, the men are looking to play also uh, a game, possibly in conjunction with our own game here in October. Um, I'll probably play another, uh, another away game in September, probably somewhere in Eastern Europe. Um, and then in November, we're hoping that the Kiev team will come back um, for a little payback. Right. <laughs> um, and, um, and now we move to December. Of course, we have Pop Warner again in December, U15, U13 levels um, back in Orlando. Um, this one's going to be really cool. Um, I'm not going to go into sort of detail on some of the other things that we'll do around it yet because it's not set in stone. But it'll be, It'll be a little bit different, um, not the tournament format, but some of the things that we'll do as Falcons out there uh, will be a little bit different, a little bit fun. So we're going out there uh, to defend a U13 title and to uh, turn the corner on the U15s. Um, you know, U15 level at that tournament is uh, super, super competitive. Um, but you know, like we can, with some of the guys we're moving up from the U13s and some of our some of our veterans, I think maybe we can. Uh, really turn the corner there. So those are the competitions um, that we're looking at. And then, of course, the um, league season begins in January in all likelihood. So um, there really is no reason, since we have all this focus on the Falcons, there's no reason why we can't have the most successful Falcons campaign that, we have, that we've had yet. Um, we take a little bit of a different philosophy. Um, you know, a lot of people wonder why, you know, we, when we play these tough teams and, you know, last year we went to Amsterdam, we played a Dutch national team, same thing. We had 25 guys and they had like 77 or something like that. And uh, we were at age 16 and they were at age 19. Um, and the reason is really simple. Um, you know, you get better by facing tough competition. That's what we do. Uh, we, we use this program to showcase what we can do, but we also use this program to improve the core of our, of our league because when they come back from tough competition, they make our league play better. We've seen that over the years. So um, we, don't, um, we don't go out and look for cupcakes to play. Uh, we don't go out and look for you know, easy wins. We, go, we, we look for good competition, uh, but we also look for um, events that will provide a very, very uh, interesting um, and rewarding cultural experience for you know for the players as well um, and I think this year um, Spain's going to be a good one um, I think it's going to be a good trip for everyone we have a, probably our largest group of youth Falcons traveling out since we're playing three levels um, which brings a whole bunch of challenges with it but um, but that's going to be a lot of fun Singapore we've been to before but a lot of the players who will be participating it'll be the first time and that's always a great trip. Uh, lots of fun, lots of fun over there. Um, good program, and um, obviously Singapore has got some cultural experiences to offer as well. So, um, very important topic, and that's and that's finances and funding. Okay, um, I, I will just repeat what I said earlier, and that is that uh, 
I really feel strongly, and any you know, for those of you who are sitting here, whether you're a parent or whether you're a player, um, and for those of you who are watching um, on the rebroadcast, um, you know, the Falcons program is sort of our community program. Uh, it doesn't make money. This is not a this is not a profitable enterprise for for the EFL or anyone else. This is simply something that we do um, to create great experiences for the kids. Um, and we think over the years. I mean, if you look back, we went to China, we've been to Singapore, we've been to the Netherlands and Germany, um, we've been to Orlando a few times. And I think when we get the feedback from parents, we do our surveys year after year. We say, okay, you know, what did you like? About the league? What did you not like? Always, right at the top of that list is Falcons. Everybody loves Falcons. Um, the challenge with Falcons is that um, it's it's hard to organize and it's hard to fund because we have to finance a lot of the costs up front. And um, despite what people may think, the EAFL is not sitting on a bag of money. In fact, it's a negative bag of money. <laughs> um, and so it is, um, it's really imperative that we get the community to sort of band together and, um, and help us to uh, you know, to provide some kind of funding for this. Um, obviously, our events were organized um, in such a way that we ask, you know, families to pay the costs of their players. Not all families are equally situated financially, as we all know. Um, and this creates a limitation on what we can do, uh, you know, what, what teams we can field. Um, but we have so many good people in this community who have so many uh, great relationships and a network within the community. You'd be surprised at how quickly you can get somebody if you talk to the right person. All of you have friends. All of you have you know people in your in your network. You talk to the right person and you say, "Hey, listen, you know, how'd you like to support a community sport? We travel." to all these places and our kids have these great experiences. We can get testimonials from our players and testimonials from our parents. Um, you know, how'd you like to support this, you know, this program? And I think the myth is that people think, well, you gotta go and get someone to write you a three million dirham check. That's not it. You need a bunch of people to write you a 20 or 30 or 40 or 50,000 dirham check, something like that. Um, and if you talk to, you know, I know that economically things are a little bit weird in, in Dubai and in the UAE right now. Um, but those budgets are still there, and it's just a matter of tapping into it. Uh, we've got we've gotten a lot of individual donations uh, from some very generous individuals in the past, um, um, and of course we won't turn those down. But uh, we really need the community. And that's that's everyone. That's you guys as well. I mean, you know. You know, when your, your, your parents' boring friends are over, you know, say, hey, listen, you know, I'm going to corner you and, you know, about my program. You'd be surprised. You'd be surprised where you can find this stuff. And that helps us to put together the kinds of teams that we want to put together. I know you guys want to go out on the road and you want to win. Um, and you want to have a good team. You? And this is what it takes. Um, now, in the absence of external funding, how are we going to pay for all this stuff? Well, one of the one of the critiques that we get year after year um, is that, well, you know, you kind of let us know a little bit late about this trip and how much it's going to cost and all of that. Um, one of the reasons for that, well, the main reason for that is that we never actually know. We, we try to pass the cost through, essentially, year for year, um, and we don't we don't know those costs until very close to the event. Um, an example that, you know, it's probably the, the, the primary reason. If we reach out to Emirates Airlines or Etihad Airlines and we say, listen, we're going to take a group of 60 people on this trip, they'll say, we'll hold those seats for you. We'll block them for you for a couple of weeks. Then you got to pay a 25% deposit. And then you've got 30 days to pay the balance. Well. We can't take that kind of risk. We can't just sit there and say, well, here's some money and let's hope everybody comes through on this. We simply can't. Um, when you pay for those seats, um, you, you typically they give you 
uh, 80% utilization. Um, you know, sometimes they push for 90% utilization, which means that if more than 10% of the seats that you blocked end up not being used, you got to pay for the ones that are not used. Um, so that's a risk, and it's a risk that, as I told you, we're a you know this is a community program. Um, we, we simply can't take that risk. Uh, so we 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 end up having to wait until we have actual costs, hotel costs, uh, the travel costs, and we try to budget meals and things like that. And um, and that um, you know that means that you know we're usually somewhere around 45 days out before we can say here's what it costs. Um, however. We do have enough experience with these trips that we can say now, uh, and I'm going to run through this with you quickly, but then we'll put this in writing so people can start budgeting. We can say now what we anticipate, what we estimate these trips will be. So we'll send this out to you in a matrix, and you'll see which events um, and which events correspond, you know, say, to your age group, right? Um, and so you can say, I'd like to participate in these events. This is an estimated cost. At least I can start putting the money aside now. Um, to plan for it, and um, so I'll kind of go through it. First things first, um, you know, there is a what we call a participation fee. Anyone who wants to participate in the Falcons is going to end up having to pay a participation fee. Why? What is that fee for? Number one, it allows us to buy your uniforms. Okay. Number two, it allows us to pay for practice fields. Very, very important. Um, for those of you who don't know. Our biggest cost for the league and for Falcons, um, leaving aside like flights, uh, practice fields. Every watered patch of earth in the UAE um, costs you an arm and a leg to use, um, unless it's like a public park, in which case they don't let a bunch of guys in fleets and helmets show up and, and use it. So um, these are very, very real and very important costs. So uh, irrespective of what events you participate in, um, if you just simply want to practice with the Falcons and never go on one of these trips or only play home games, great, no problem. Um, but everybody will pay um, a participation fee and we'll publish that information. So again, hopefully uh, parents can start budgeting now and setting aside the money now. We can get the participation fees paid. Uh, we'll start ordering some of the uniforms. We can start doing some of the important things as we prepare uh, try to get a jump on the season. Now, looking at each of the events, um, if we say, let's take the Spain trip, for example. It's a little bit longer. It's, like a, it, it's not a weekend like Singapore. It's a week, uh, probably a week-long trip. I'm told, and I don't know if this applies to all the schools, but I'm told that there's one one-day holiday somewhere in there for ASD. Mm -hmm. I think it's the 21st, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so that's great for the ASD people. It means fewer days of school missed. Um, well, great for your parents, maybe not great for you, right? Um, but um, um, that's actually helpful to us. I think, I think the total is going to be about four days of school uh, that will end up having to be missed for that. Now, when I say that, and I'll say this to all the parents and, and anyone who's watching here, um, I'm, uh, I'm not known for... Uh, you know, for being shy about my comments. So I'll just come out and say that it always startles me that parents will say, oh my God, he can't go on this trip. He's going to miss so much school, but I'll send him on a trip to, you know, Sri Lanka or something like that, right? For, with the school. And you go, well, what's the difference? We have cultural experience, but we add, you know, it's the same kind of thing. You go out there, you're going to get just as much of a cultural experience, but you're going to go one step further. Because those school trips, and our kids go on the school trips, and those are great. I think they're fantastic. But at the end of the day, their interaction with people from that country is a lot less than what our Falcons get. Because our guys are going on the field, and they're knocking heads with those guys, and then afterward they're, you know, high-fiving them, and they're having dinner with them. And so you actually get a little bit more. So to me, we design these things to be educational as well. Um, so for all you parents who are watching out there who go, oh, that's a lot of school missed, I'm telling you that's a better education for them um, than a lot of the things that they do, even when they're sitting in the classroom here. I said that. So, um, <laughs> so that trip, we estimate, uh, will be about 5,000 dirhams per player. Okay. Um, so this is on top of the participation fee. 
Uh, we estimate the Singapore trip will be about 3,500 dirhams um, for the uh, U19s and U15s. And we anticipate the Orlando trip to be 12,000 dirhams. It's roughly about 11,500. Um, How much is Orlando again? What's that? How much is Orlando? About 12,000. Just budget 12,000. It might be slightly less than that, but if you budget 12,000, you'll be in there. Um, the, the, the variable costs in there is really plane ticket. Um, um, the accommodation and everything is fixed. Uh, the way that the Orlando, for those of you who have not participated, the way that that tournament works, it's organized by a group called Global Football. Um, they work with Disney Resorts, so everything is fixed price. Um, and if you want to ask me um, if it's slightly overpriced, I will say yes it is, but that's because for people who are organizing it, who this is their job, this is how they make money. Um, and so yes, there's uh, there's margin built in so that those guys can you know, profit from what they do for a living. Um, however, it is a really, really good tournament. Um, it's really been um, one of our more successful annual events year after year after year, not just from the perspective of having won a championship, um, but also really just from the, um, the feedback we get from players and parents. Um, speaking of that, Really quickly, I would also suggest to parents come along on these trips. You know, really, I mean, we, we encourage you guys to. First of all, it's great when we when we play an away game. We actually have some people cheering for us. You know, because the home team always has people cheering for them. Um, it's really great to see some of our fans. You know, in the stands. Um, two, um, I think that uh, you know it's been my experience that I remember on one trip, you know, one of the dads looked at me and said. Man, this is a great, great trip. I said, you're having more fun than your kid. He goes, I might be, right? You know, um, I think it is a rewarding trip for um, for the families as well. So, um, so those three events, um, if you look at it, if you are U13, you're only looking at the first one and the last one. If you're U19, you're only looking at the first one and the second one. But if you're U15, you got three events there, right? Um, so. Um, you know, budgeting now, uh, I think it's going to be very, very important for, you know, all of that. So we've given you some estimates. Uh, we will always endeavor to bring the cost down. Um, we, we share one thing, one little bit of philosophy and economics here um, with a little bit of an anecdote to go along with. Um, we obviously try to keep the cost down. So we will put as many kids into a room as we can. Philosophically, I think that that's a good thing. Um, you know, these trips are sports trips. Um, and I realize that everybody's got chauffeurs and nannies and all kinds of stuff over here. Um, that's fine. But that's not what we're doing. Um, I have had parents come and say, oh my God, my son, he can't sleep in a queen bed with another boy. That's horrible. We used to sleep on the gym floor. Uh, that was our sports road trip. We would open the gym and they'd say, throw your sleeping bag on the floor and you sleep on the floor. And you use the locker room showers, and, and that's sports, you know. Um, I also think that um, um, it's a good bonding experience. Um, you know, you get a kid and you say, okay, there's your private room, and he locks his doors and he puts his headphones on. He's not part of the team. Um, you know, when they actually have to wrestle over, you know, who gets to use the shower next or where they yell at each other and say, man, your clothes are stinky, go wash them. You know, then they start to bond and we all, we all know how that works. So, um, so we do that for a number of reasons, but hopefully you guys can see that it also keeps the cost down um, by, you know, doubling, tripling, and in the case of Orlando, quadrupling uh, kids in, into a room. Um, so that's basically it. If you look at the overall, um, People often want to know what the costs or what the expenses are. Um, I've gone through for the participation fee. We talked about uniforms, uh, fields. Um, for home events, we have to pay just like we do for league games. We have to pay for referees. We have to pay for uh, the photographers and the videographers. Um, you know, there's all those costs that go. Uh, you know, that are ancillary to um, uh, running a home event. And then, of course, when we travel, um, we have our travel kit. Um, 
You know, we want the Falcons to be a unified program. Everyone wears the same thing when they travel. They look, they look good. They look professional. They're easy to spot in an airport. That's very important too. Um, so there's the, there's a kit. There's the uh, airfare. There's a hotel. Uh, and typically we have, you know, every player sort of bring uh, a daily sort of allowance for meals. But on just about every trip, we'll have at least one team meal uh, where we'll build that in for costs and we'll, you know, sort of have one fixed price team meal um, as sort of part of, the, uh, part of the event. So there it is. Um, I think we've got a really exciting program. Um, I can announce right now uh, head coaches. Um, obviously, for the men, it's Kyle Jordan. He continues in his role as, as a head coach. I'll be coaching the U19s. Uh, Jerry steps up, Coach Rivera steps up from the U13 to the U15s this year. We've not yet identified our U13 coach. Uh, that's a, uh, a work in progress, and we'll let you know how that goes. So, uh, oh, and one final thing people will ask when does this all begin? We are targeting the last week of August for our first practice. Um, and uh, hopefully, I know that that's really hot. Yeah, we try as much as we can to get this indoor facility here um, you know, so that we can get in a good four hours training. Why do we do four hour training on the weekend? Because we have people coming in from Alain and Abu Dhabi. We have a limited opportunity to get all the players together to practice. So you get one practice, one uni unified practice a week. And so we've got to maximize that. So we do a heavy four hour practice. Uh, we get some good work in. So, okay. With that said, any questions? Feel free. You guys can ask questions too. Yes. So when will all the detailed information go out to all the families and families? Uh, even my wife puts me on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> I know the answer, yeah. so I decided to answer the answer. What is the answer? Within two weeks. Oh, yeah, I love that answer. Within two weeks. Within two weeks, we'll get uh, some printed information <laughs> yeah. out to everybody. Uh, I thought you were going to say one week. Two weeks is good. I can do that. Learn not to overpromise. So um, one week is what we want. Two weeks is probably with yes. Within two weeks, we'll get some printed information out, and um, one of those things will be a registration form, um, which will be submitted along with the participation fee. Um, it'll include jersey size, pants size, and all that stuff that we need. Um, so um, yeah, and then we'll we'll have detail uh, the schedule. Um, we'll have. Uh, We'll lay out the estimated costs again, just so that everybody can see them. And um, uh, hopefully there'll be all the information. Plan. Payment plan, we'll try to set up a payment plan. Uh, we'll probably incentivize, we'll, we'll create some kind of an incentive on the payment plan, some kind of a discount if you are paying regularly for um, the event. Um, you know, because, uh, you know, we really want to encourage it. And you, you guys, players, okay, um, we need you. We need you to go out there and tell your buddies, you know, to participate. All right, tell them to get serious. Tell them to commit. Um, when a kid tells you, "Well, my mom, my dad, this, that, and the other," have them call me. Have the parents call me. I'll talk to them. Okay, we can be pretty persuasive. We have different techniques that we use. Um, so, um, right? Um, but yeah, you know, and get them engaged early. Right. And committed to the program early, so we'll get this information out. Any other questions? Do you have sponsorship packages that the kids can pitch to, to grow? It's a good question. Um, we don't have anything right now, but we will put something together. Uh, it's a great question. So the question is, for those of you on the video, do we have sponsorship packages that the kids can um, hand out to people? And we will put something together. Uh, we'll keep we'll keep it fairly simple. We'll put together like a one pager. That kind of describes it, and then people can follow up with us. The potential sponsors can follow up with us for more detail. Um, but, um, yeah, we'll put something together for that. It's a good question. Thank you. Any other questions? I was so thorough that yes, everybody exactly. has all the information that they need. You don't have any questions? No? You always have questions. <laughs> can we get more practice? Can we get more practice? Yeah. Um, so, like, for example, let me explain, like, for, um, some of the sports, they take it so seriously to a point where the kids um, practice in the morning and in the afternoon. They go before school, like, 5 a.m., 
they're there for an hour, an hour and a half. And then after school, they go back to practice again. Yeah. And then um, what happens with that specific sport, for example, these kids go off to the Olympics, they go off to, you know, do great things. Yeah. So, is that... Okay, so I'll repeat kind of the question in a, in a short form. Um, the question is, can we get more practices? And then uh, there was a, a sort of reference made to sort of two-a-day practices for um, for some of the more elite athletes. Um, we'd love to do that, uh, but we're limited by a few things. Um, number one is cost. Literally every practice costs us a lot of money. Um, it is, for example, you can't go over there and rent half of the pitch. You rent the full thing or nothing. And um, now the, the pitch costs are running about 1,200 degrees an hour. Um, Does it have to be in a, in a sports pitch? Um, like at a polo club? At a polo Do you have a free field? Is that what you're offering up? <laughs> <laughs> if you have a free field, then yes. <laughs> so we'll always listen to that. Um, a patch of grass. No, no, a patch of grass large enough. Yeah, that the all-out cleats is large enough, large enough to be able to, you know, uh, throw the ball, kick the ball, that sort of thing. Right. Um, so yeah, that, okay. so that's one limitation. Um, yeah, so if anyone has a free, free patch of grass of suitable size for all ears, absolutely. Second limitation is that. Um, um, not all parents are as enthusiastically supportive of their kids' athletic activities as, um, as you are, right? So um, trying to get, I, I, trying to get uh, a critical mass of people for 5.30 a.m. practice, I think, is going to be a challenge. Uh, what we can do and what we, what we try to do, and last year we instituted this for Falcons. And, and remember, when we're talking about Falcons, we're talking about people coming from different cities. All right, so someone in Alain coming for a 5.30 a.m. practice in Dubai, he's got to leave his house at 3 o'clock, 3.30 in the morning. That's not going to happen. All right, so realistically speaking, that's not going to happen. Um, so what we've tried to do la last year um, is mirror our league practice schedules by um, having one four-hour Friday practice and then two two-hour practices on Sundays and Tuesdays. Um, we did that last year. The, and it works actually in each of the cities. It works actually pretty well in Dubai because we've got a critical mass of Falcons in Dubai. It doesn't work so well in Alain and Abu Dhabi because, you know, there are like three kids showing up to practice. Um, you know, so you can only run so many drills and do so many, you know, conditioning exercises uh, before you get kind of bored showing up for a two hour practice, right? Um, so that's a little bit of a challenge. We will continue to do the weekday practices in Dubai, and we'll see how what our numbers are like in the other cities. Um, so, in summary, we'll do four hours uh, during the Falcons training season. We'll do four hours on a Friday, and then on a Sunday and a Tuesday, uh, we'll do two hours each day uh, after school. Right. So we will continue with that. It's probably the best we can do under the circumstances. Um, if we really have a highly motivated group of kids. And they say, we'd like to practice five days a week, six days a week, and we have a field that we can use. I'll commit the time. I'll commit the time to it. Um, it's a big time commitment, but I'm willing to do it if they're willing to do it. It has to be a critical mass. I mean, it, it doesn't make sense to show up, you know, with the same three kids. I love them. They're great. and They're really highly motivated. And, you know, most of them are already here, right? But but the, the reality is it's limited return for such a small group um, so uh, I love the thought I love the idea we'd love to get more practice in um, especially since we start sort of in August and, and you know three four weeks later we're on the road going to play in a tournament it's not a lot of practice it's really four three maybe, maybe three full team practices before we go hit the road it's not a lot um, but um, those are our limitations so yeah if you've got field let me know. Um, yeah. Otherwise, I think, I think two a day is not going to work with our community. Um, early morning stuff, I think. And it's what we're down. Um, but, um, but we'll try to do more during the week if we can.
like when you say parents will be bad. Oh yeah. But look, I mean, no offense guys, but every every youth coach will tell you the hardest thing about youth coaches is parents. <laughs> There's a you always have a core of like really great parents. And then you've got parents who kinda of hover on the periphery and sort of you know. Um, God bless you guys. I love all the parents, but it's uh, <laughs> but you're not you're not you're, you're not usually trying to accommodate the kids. You're usually trying to accommodate the parents. And parents have busy schedules. They have multiple kids, and they're taking this kid to this you know activity and that kid to that activity. Um, you know, it's not always easy. We understand that. Uh, and unfortunately, we're not like in the U.S. where we have a you know, you know there's like you roll out of class and you go to your practice and you're you're, you're in the same area here. People are coming from all these different places all over the city and all over the, really the country mm -hmm. for these trainings. So. Anyone else? Mm -hmm. Any other questions? You have a question? You know everything already? Yeah. You're all set? Yeah, pretty much, yeah, there we go. Cool. Amit? No? Sammy? Good? Joaquin, okay, Isaiah? No? I think you could give us an overall what you need. Uh, um I will say I will say this is like um it's like getting birthday presents or Christmas presents um money's always a good idea <laughs> you know <laughs> right um, and first and foremost, we actually, we, we, we need, um, you know, a substantial amount of funding to help us to reduce the cost across the board, which will maximize participation. Um, the, um, you know, little things, when I talk about helmets, it's not just a cool thing to do. Um, Shady can tell you from this trip that we just went on, um, it makes a big difference. And you get, you get team on the road and they're in the right gear and they look uniform and they you know it makes a big difference um, it markets the program very well um, and it helps it helps players really you know it, it motivates them um, so you know that is something that you know we've been looking at for a couple of years it's probably look I'll lay it out about twenty thousand dollars gets us helmets for all the all divisions, all the way down, twenty thousand dollars. So it's less than hundred thousand dirhams. Um, you know, someone's, some companies, you know, CSR contribution. Um, and by the way, it's great value for money because you know, we'll put that company's logo on the back of the helmet, and we'll use those helmets for like three years. So you know, that's a that's a heck of a bargain in terms of a sponsorship deal. Um, and we know how to, uh, you know, we, our photographers and, and, and whatnot know how to uh, take photos to get submitted to uh, publications in a way that really spotlight those those sponsors' logos. So, um, money number one, first and foremost, um, sponsorship dollars. Uh, that's that's key. Um, by the way, it doesn't have to be limited to sponsors. Um, we can't really do it again this year, but last year we did a little bit of crowdfunding thing online. Um, it was a little bit of a sneaky thing. We can't do it again. I'll explain why that you know, the authorities here get, you know, look, you're crowdfunding for a charity in the Middle East. Um, you pop up on every intelligence agency's you know, radar screen. And it's just, it is what it is. Um, but also here you have to have a particular license to be able to do that kind of fundraising. But that doesn't mean that doesn't mean that your favorite auntie or uncle can't write a check, right, you know, to support your program. Okay, this happens. Okay, this happens. We, we, you know, we find from time to time that there are family members who are, you know, really excited. And they'll, they'll write a check. Hey, why not? All kinds of organizations raise money this way. Okay, so that's another way to do it. Um, and um, yes, if you have a facility that can be used. Um, you know, obviously a field is great, it's great dimensions, and you know, we can use it uh, you know, free of charge. That's fantastic. That, that helps reduce the cost across the board. And any savings that we have in terms of facilities will pass on um, into the event costs. Um, the, um, the, the other thing is that early in the season, um, 
late August. Throughout September, it's obviously warm. As far as I know, there's only in Dubai. There's only two indoor facilities: this one in the core dome, which is over the um, Wassel Football Club, over by the, whatever that hospital is out there, um, and down to Wooden uh, Metro, whatever. But um, you know, if there are alternate indoor facilities that anyone's aware of that we can use that uh, reduced or no cost, great, let us know. I mean, these sorts of things are very, very helpful. Absolutely. So. Any other questions, thoughts, comments? Anything at all? No? What color do you want the uniforms to be? You should drink. Be asking me about this. I later. shouldn't be asking you about this. That's true. What do you think? What color should the uniforms be? I don't know. I don't know? You got a lot of I don't knows. Ahmed, you going to say I don't know? I don't know. <laughs> All right, we'll end on that note. Nobody knows. Uh, thank you all. Um, if anyone has any further questions, feel free to email me, patrick at eafl.ae. Um, and uh, as promised, we'll get some written information out in the next couple of weeks, including the registration forms. Um, so be checking your email. If you're watching this or you're hearing this, and if by the, if two weeks from now you do not have it, it means that we have a problem with our email. And it's, this happens. Sometimes things go into the spam folders. Just feel free to call me so I didn't get anything. Okay. All right. Add anything? You're good. Okay. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.